we invite the congregation and those that's watching us on the, on the media to join us in our pastoral prayer. For those that is able, we invite you to kneel with us. Our loving Father in heaven, we enter into your presence through this humble prayer to worship you as our creator. We thank you for health, for trust and for hope, for goodness and freedom, and especially for the gift of life. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather together in person and on the online platforms on this beautiful Sabbath morning, where we can share your peace with each other, having the assurance that we are protected by your almighty power and love. Thank you, Jesus, for the promise and the surety that you left with us before you ascended to heaven. Thank you for the promise that to every believer you give hope of everlasting life. You give us the power through the work of the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and the ability to prove what your good and acceptable and perfect will is. You give a purpose and a reason for each one of us to live, not just for now, but for eternity. All we have is a gift from your hand. Thank you for your presence in our lives, and through the Holy Spirit we can be conscious of our actions that is in harmony with your will. We also thank you for the consciousness of sin in our lives, and we plead for your forgiveness. We will take a few moments to contemplate our, in our own lives and individually ask for forgiveness for our sins. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins and to be able to be in right standing with our Creator. May those who currently experience pain and heartache be aware of your presence in a special way as we worship together this morning. I ask, Lord, that you will be with Pastor AJ today and may your children hear, understand and animate that what we are about to receive from your word. Bless us on the Sabbath morning is my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kan ek iets vir jou sê? Jou boeties gaan hier die story ook like. Ek sit Good morning. Goeiemorgen. Should I speak in English? Afrikaans? Or Kosa? I won't do Kosa, because it will be tough. Even for me. <laughs> well, this morning's story is about a bunch of bees. Now, who of you have ever had an experience with bees? With the bee. Have you had an experience with the bee? Have you been stung by one? You haven't? Have you been stung by one? Did you walk on it? Yes, and it's not nice, right? So as soon as you walk on it or you pick it up accidentally, there's like this, this stinging sensation in your hand or your foot or wherever you get stung. And within a matter of a minute, what happens? It swells up, right? It swells up. And it begins to And it starts to itch and itch and itch. Now, there's one day, so I love working with bees. Can you believe that? It's a hobby of mine. And I actually introduced the hobby to Eunice, my wife, a few years ago. And guess what? She also likes it, which is amazing. This one day, this was about in 2011, so it's almost it's 10 years ago, 2011, 2012, 9, 10 years ago, I had a swarm of bees, which I called the rebellious teens. Now, this swarm of bees was actually very aggressive. Now, when a swarm of bees is aggressive, and they attack you, they're almost as strong as a full-grown lion. So, for instance, a full-grown lion weighs up to 250 kilograms. 
if that lion had to jump on a full-grown man's back, he would break the man's back in half. That's just how it is because it's heavy. Now, the bees, this day was very aggressive. Now, I, I like praying, and I asked the Lord, Lord, please, can you just protect me? And I was walking closer to the swarm of bees. Guess what the bees started to do? And they started to chase me. They started to come towards me. And I'm like, this needs to stop. So I started to speak with the bees. Sounds weird, right? I guess, chill net. I'm coming to help you. And I went and opened up the box. And guess why they were so aggressive? They had so much food inside the box that they didn't have enough space anymore. Now, here's the interesting thing. When there's no more space inside the box, the swarm becomes very, very aggressive and very upset with whoever's around them. And they start attacking animals, people, even each other sometimes. So when I started to take the honey out, they started to get even more upset. So I took the honey out and I took the honey home and I took all the honey out of the racks. And when I went back to put the racks back into the box, guess what? The swarm of bees were a lot calmer and were more quiet. Because their food, they shared their food, in other words, even though I had to take it out, but they shared their food, which meant that there was space in the box and they could get back to work to harvest nectar and pollen. And this is a very important point for us to remember. If you're going to keep your food to yourself, what's going to happen? you're not going to feel well because you're going to have too much. And I'm not just talking about food, but I'm also talking about smiles because that is something that's good for us to share with other people. So if you're going to keep your smile to yourself, you're going to become very upset and actually depressed and down and sad. Now, I know it's very difficult to smile behind that mask, but I want you guys to try quickly. Smile behind that mask. I want to see if you guys can get it right. And you out there can do it the same. Try and smile behind your mask. Is it difficult? Is it easy? Are you smiling? You're not smiling. Smile quickly. There yeah, I can see this. The eyes are changing. And this is important for us to realize. When we share something, guess what's going to come back? That positivity is going to come back to us. The bees shared their honey, even though I had to take it out. They shared their honey. And now they're actually more positive and more quiet. That night, I got about 10 bee stings because of that swarm. And you know how they stung me? Through my bee suit. That's how aggressive they were that night. It wasn't fun, but I had to get some honey out so that they can become more quiet and calm. And it's the same thing with the gospel. If you're going to keep the gospel to yourself you're actually going to become very sad because the gospel of Jesus Christ was designed to share it. So I want you guys to go home and share with your family the story that I shared this morning, okay? And tell them that we have to smile even though we're behind a mask. Can we do that? I'm going to ask you guys for a, a Bluetooth fist bump. You guys know what that is? That's agreement that we're going to do it. This is a Bluetooth fist bump. Bluetooth fist bump. And everyone in the church can also give a Bluetooth fist bump. So I hope you guys learned something this morning that we must share what we have with people around us. And I hope that you'll have a good Sabbath day further and head into an awesome week of school. It's almost holiday, right? Yeah? Almost. Well, that's nice. Okay, well, come, let's pray together, and then you guys can go and sit again. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we can share about your gospel and your love for our lives. Thank you that you're God of our lives, Lord, and we now commit our lives into your hands. Now, I'd like to pray that you may be with each and every young person here today, that you may bless them and keep them safe. And not just those sitting in front here, but each and every person in this church, Father. We love you, and we can't wait to hear, see you, Father God. We pray this in your name alone. Yes, that is true to...
find a balance between COVID regulations and our need to bring our offerings and tithes to the Lord. We um, have two boxes available at the doors where you can place your tithe and offering in the door, at, at the door, in the box as we leave. Alternatively, we've got um, several electronic avenues for us to return our tithes and to bring our offerings. And like you can see on the screen there, with the banking details and the snap scan option. I'm so happy I'm able to sing because then I'm allowed to take my mask off. Wouldn't you like to join me up front here? Then we can, okay, no. <laughs> I will always be a child in my Jesus' eyes because he's my father and he takes care of me. And I know he takes care of you as well. I was there when you drew the breath of life and I could hear your voice the first time that I cried though you couldn't see me I was very near and there's something now that I want you will always be a child in my eyes. And when you need some love, my arms are open wide. Even when you're growing old, I hope you in my eyes and I was there the first time that you prayed and I heard all the promises you made when you fell before me, my Father, I have sinned. I picked you up and held you close again. You will always be a child in my eyes. And when you need some love, my arms are open wide. And even when you're growing old, I hope you realize you will always be a child in my eyes. You will always be a child my eyes and when you need some love my arms are open wide and even when you're growing old I hope you realize you will always be a child in my Eyes. You will always be the child in my eyes. As you can see, there is a uh, Hand sanitizer at the back here. 
just to make sure that everyone knows that we're following COVID protocols. But yes, good morning, welcome. I hope that you'll be blessed today. And I still want to see those smiles are pushing that mask up a bit. Let's close our eyes as we, as we open or we'll continue with our worship service. Father, we thank you that we have this privilege of being together this morning, Lord. We come to your throne of grace and mercy, and we pray that you may show us how stress in our lives and in our families can be relieved. We commit our lives into your hands, and we pray to see your name alone. Amen. So I don't know if you've been following the YouTube channel. This is the fourth seminar slash sermon in the basic or the best advice for the family series. The first one, we looked at the Word of God, how the Word of God is actually part of the best advice that we should be going to the Word of God. And today we're looking at how stress in the family can actually be relieved. Now, Bloomberg did a study many years ago, actually in 2016, and it came out that South Africa is rated the second most stressed country in the world. We can actually ask or answer the question why and how by many different factors. And I think we've experienced one of those factors this last week called ESCOM because it creates challenges with our work, with our daily lives, hoping that our fridges aren't going to pack up or our computers going to blow up with the electricity surges coming back up on or stuff like that. But in an article last year, 23rd of April, 2019, News 24 and the City Press goes in, goes, or the City Press goes into fines. SA is the second most stressed country in the world. Here's how you can cope. As stress becomes the chronic epidemic of our time, there is an overwhelming demand for strategies to manage the condition effectively. Health and performance educator Richard Sutton told a recent Gibbs forum that while persistent stress can have a de de debilitating effect on health, in short bursts, stress could offer tremendous opportunities to break personal barriers and to encourage growth. Continue. If we remove stress from our lives, we will not be the best versions of ourselves and won't be performing at the best levels you can. However, while stress is necessary as a motivator, many of our ways of coping with sustained stress are unhealthy, he said. Finding that balance. And the article continues to define what type of stress challenges we actually have and what causes stress. Now, I don't know about you, I've been, I've been experiencing stress over the last year considerably more, actually, than prior to being locked down. Because now we don't have to travel from one meeting to another meeting or one visitation as a pastor to another visitation or one um, sermon or seminar or training session. You literally, at a click of a button, you're flicking through different meetings and you find yourself on the computer between 10 and 12 hours a day. Screen time. We were always told prior to COVID, stop your kids from having too much screen time. Ladies and gentlemen, how did you cope in COVID by having your kids on screens with the schools permanently? Are you stressed out? Do you know why you're stressed out? Should you be stressed out? Turn with me to Mark chapter, chapter 2. And I'll be reading in verse 27 and 28. We could even start from 23. Mark chapter 2, verse 23 to 28. And it says, Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and as he went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in the need and hungry, he and those with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests. 
and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Now I'm stating from the beginning, this is not a, a completely an exegetical sermon, but these points point perfectly to the, the, the idea of how we can overcome our stress within life. And I think the simple answer is, how much of God and Jesus Christ is in your life today? If we're stressed out on a permanent basis, and we're not following the advice that God has given us through His Word, can we actually say that we're completely listening to what He's saying? We have to overcome the challenges of this this life. And the only way we can do that is by going to Jesus and asking the Lord, Lord, show us the way of overcoming our stress. Now, it's interesting that we find ourselves as probably the second most stressed country in the world, which, which might start to make us realize what's happening in our lives. Why are you stressed? Are you tired today? Are you tired to such a degree that your, your mental state at the end of the day is like, man, I can't do this anymore? I want to give up. It's interesting that there's some advice of how to overcome stress is in the following aspects. Listen to music. Call a friend. I guess in COVID, that's what we did. We called a friend, but we actually wanted to see them. We wanted to give them a hug. We wanted, we wanted to laugh with them. We wanted to go to a bride together. And we were like, Cyril said to us, you cannot do that. Talk yourself through it. I remember the one day my mother said to me, I'm sitting at home and she just hears a whole bunch of voices in the room. And she came walking in there and guess who was sitting in the room? Me alone. She said, for my kind, what is fout? I hear the clump of in. I'm just hearing voices and voices and voices. I'm like, oh, I'm just talking to myself. Many years later, I realized that that might be a sign of insanity, but gl- gladly I'm not insane and I'm still okay. But talk yourself through it. Encourage yourself. Motivate yourself. And I'm coming to the most important point. I'm building up to that. Eat right. Sometimes laugh it off. But remember that by laughing it off, you might be sweeping it under the carpet. A challenge. A stress. You've got to work through it. Another aspect was drink tea. And sit down. Take that peace moment and say, you know what? Everything's going to be okay. You just got to get through this. Be mindful of the stresses that you find yourself and find in your life. Exercise, rest, sleep, breathe easy. And the final one is surrender your stress over to God. When we say this, the biggest question is how? How should I surrender my stress over to God? Is it as simple as just saying, Lord, I give you my problem right now. There it is. Amen. 30 seconds later, you're like worrying about that same point again. And then you're like, Lord, why haven't you taken the stress out of my life? It's a process. Now, the causes of stress. What would you say encourages stress in your life? And I want you to think about the things taking place in your life. What's causing stress in your life? It might be your work. It might be finances. It might be that you've lost a job. It might be a relationship that you find yourself in and it's like, oh, this is creating a little bit of chaos at the moment. It might be not being able to meet the needs of your spouse or your family and that you might even have had a pay cut. Or you've been eating too much during COVID. Or too little. Not exercising enough. And if I look at what the Word of God actually advises us, Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, He says, Surrender your life to me. Come to me, you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you. Can I hear that word? Rest. Psalms 95, sing praises to God. So, so when you sing, I don't know about you, but it was, it was fun singing this morning. 
And I'm using fun in a very loose context because it's, it's encouraging to our souls when we sing praises to the Lord. I like singing in the shower and maybe on my own, but it's encouraging to my soul. You might feel like that you don't have a voice to sing, but sing those praises to God. 1 John 5, verse 14 to 15 says, Pray, ask the Lord to comfort you when you're struggling with stuff in your life. Take that peace, put life on a pause. Psalms 119, verse 105, read the scripture. I find it that when I have a Bible in front of me and I can turn the pages, it's satisfying to my soul. Because these days, guess what we have? Digital. We can just scroll through, okay, find it, but it's not the same experience. And I'm seeing the young people today, they're on these things permanently. Did you guys, have you guys noticed that? Tablets, phone, and they're not just reading, but they're playing games. They're on Google, YouTube. A mother shared with me that a two-year-old can actually search Google for YouTube and find certain videos that they enjoy on YouTube. Two years old. How? No idea. Sometimes I even struggle to find these videos these days. Uncle Bobby, that means I'm getting old, right? Galatians 6 is another verse that I want us to shortly look at. If you have your Bible with you, Galatians chapter 6. And this, I believe, is why we have church. This is the center point of why we have church. And we're supposed to be doing this not just on a weekly basis, but on a daily basis. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This is Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going on to verse 2. Verse 3, sorry. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone. And, and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. Did you get that? Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If I notice that someone's stressed out, I can go and sit with them and say, hey, how are you doing? Can I pray with you? And if I can support and help you, how can I do so? But here's the challenge. We're all so stressed out that we're afraid to help someone else because they might place that burden on us, which means that we have to carry their burden with our burden, and then we become even more stressed. But here's the thing. He says, you yeah, carry each other's burdens. So if I go to someone else, guess what that person's supposed to be doing back to me? Helping me out with my burden. And this is the concept of church. This is how it was supposed to be all along and permanently that we're here to support each other. I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels like that, that we're all alone in our little islands. Doing our own little thing. Many years ago, before I met Eunice, I said to myself, you're on an island, my friend. You're never going to get married. And I actually said to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to remain on this island. I'm not going to allow anyone into this island, even friends. They're not coming onto my island. And I was, I was at bay. I kept everything at bay. And guess what happened? Eunice found a boat somehow to get onto the island. I'm still trying to figure out how she did that, but the Lord allowed her to get onto my island, and I found her on my island. And you know what? We share burdens. We share challenges. I have friends. We share burdens, and we share challenges. Not the same way as what we do, but we carry each other through challenges that we face in life. We can see that the church in this world 
Seventh-day Adventist Church is taking a huge knock worldwide. The question is why? We're supposed to be the testimony of the gospel. I think we're stressed. How are we going to relieve family stress? Now, what model do we have in recuperating from a difficult week? We figure out plans, but God has a better, more successful plan for us. We work six days, and we're supposed to rest the seventh day according to what the Bible actually says. I believe that's the model that the Lord has instituted for us to say work six days, and the seventh day you're relieved from your stress. And guess what? We try and make our lives so busy that when it comes to Sabbath, we're also stressed. Ladies and gentlemen, this day was made for us to rest. If you, by the end of the Sabbath day, are feeling stressed out starting a new week, you did not rest that day. You've actually got to ask, Lord, what has happened in my life today that I'm tired and stressed out and I cannot go through the next week? Have I spent enough time with you. We need a solid relationship with God. It revolves around time, communication, and love. A relationship with God decreases stress in our lives. Furthermore, the day of rest is there to build our relationship with God. Now, God's advice and institutes of the Sabbath day was specifically orientated around family. He created in six days, and guess what he told Adam and Eve would happen on the seventh day? You will rest. You will walk with me. You will talk with me. You will spend time with me. It's God's time. It's not our time. The Sabbath day is God's time. And if God has instituted a day of rest, why are we trying to make His time our time? And we try and fill the Sabbath day with so many different things that when it comes to the end of the day, we actually feel like we're more tired than what we started. But yet we still receive the blessing. I'm not saying you should go home and sleep all day. Because I believe there's four aspects of the Sabbath. It's for fellowship. It's for worship. It's for sharing, reaching out, and then, of course, it's for rest. Genesis 2, verse 1 to 3, God institutes the Sabbath. Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, he tells us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. When last have you forgotten about the Sabbath? Now, I might be speaking to the converted here. But can we forget about the Sabbath by thinking we're keeping the Sabbath? I believe so, we can. Deuteronomy 5, verse 12 to 14, same thing. Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14 defines what we should be doing on the Sabbath day. I'm going to read that in a short, short while. That's in the Old Testament. We come to the New Testament, the day of rest in the New Testament. Jesus kept the day of rest in Mark 1, verse 21 to 25. Matthew 12, verse 9 to 13. We can go on and on and on about how we're defining the Sabbath day and the purpose of the Sabbath day for our, our day-to-day lives. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Paul kept the day of rest. Acts 17, verse 2 and 3. Acts 13, verse 14. Hebrews 4, verse 9. Now this is what I truly believe. And I think that the Word of God speaks this consistently in life. It's God's time. I want you to ponder on that concept. It's God's time. If it's God's time, He defines what takes place in His time. 
And where do we find that out? It's by having a relationship with the person. I've realized your niece has her time. And she likes to do things in her time. And I've realized that I don't have space to disrupt her time. She's realized that I have my time. And you know what's funny? I love being in the garage. It's like my man cave. No, her washing machine is in my man cave. I'm joking, it's our washing machine. <laughs> I find it interesting that, that when God institutes time, he says, keep it holy, spend time with me. If we look at stress, how are you going to overcome stress? I hope that the first point that you're going to try and do is go to God and say, Lord, I'm stressed out. Please help me. Turn with me to Isaiah 58, verse 12 to 14. Isaiah 58, verse 12 to 14. So this message this morning is to make you ponder on how you are going to overcome stress in your life. Isaiah 58, verse 12 to 14, and it says the following, Those from among... Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach. Are you hearing that? The restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I shall cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You will be called the repairer of the breach. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day. It's beautiful words. The repairer of the breach. Ladies and gentlemen, the world today is stressed out, they worried, they freaking out about what's happening around them and they're looking for peace. And I find it interesting. The God has given us the gospel to share with all the world and guess what the gospel goes and says, "Come to me you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest." If the church is stressed out, how can we reach out to someone else? Now we might be saying, we're all so human. But I would like to encourage you to realize that God is on your side. Allow Him to come into your home and change your stress levels. Now here's this, this is slom, sl slot song. Is it right? Here's the summary. Three points. First of all, time. Second of all, communication. And third of all, love. If you want to decrease your stress in your family, ensure that you're spending time with each other, not on digital. I heard this last week on the radio. There's a, there's a, 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 a company that, that started a, um, a brand. They call themselves Games for Brains. And the reason why they started this was that they realized that families are not spending time with each other. So they started to create games where families can sit around a table, talk with each other, and spend time playing games. We're not spending time with each other because we're rushing to this meeting and that thing, and, and life just passes. Second of all, communication. Are we talking with each other? Are we spending time with each other? The Sabbath day was set aside so that we can truly communicate with God, spend time with God, spend time in His Word, and ensure that we surrender our lives to Him. And then lastly, love. 
When love is in the home, there is beauty all around. Drop a gesture. Play hide-and-go-seek with your kids. Play hide-and-go-seek with your wife and your husband if you have to. Put life on a pause for one day a week. And maybe even go further to say, I'm putting life on a pause for maybe two hours a day. Or three hours a day. God calls us to be the witness and the testimony to the world today. Globally, the Adventist Church is now running Global Youth Day. Today. The date is the 20th of March. The whole the world church is running Global Youth Day so that the young people can reach out to the world. Some churches in Cape Town are handing out sanitizer and masks to people on the street. Some of them are handing out food. Now I'm encouraging us, we've got to make this a lifestyle because when we reach out to humanity, guess what happens inside our hearts? We receive peace and rest and God can continue to work with us. Let's love each other the way that he wants us to love him and one another. May God bless you as you go through this week. And please remember that stress can kill you, but God can overcome that stress. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you that we can realize that by going to the word of God, communicating with you, Lord, spending time with you and understanding that the love of God is the center point of our lives, that you can help us overcome the stress levels that we find in our lives. Lord. In prayer, in study, and also in caring and sharing with each other the depth of your life within our lives. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us today. We pray this in your name alone. Amen.